Because what they are trying to do, as Paul Caret said, is nothing less than Mundell, Robert Mundell, and Arthur Laffer trickle down economics. The market's going to solve everything. Oh, the market will maybe that will solve healthcare too. Let's just let Mark Shkreli charge whatever he wants to charge for medicine because guess what? It saves lives. That's not how you do urban planning. And for me, what I find so offensive is, parties aside, I'm a communitarian. I believe in community. And I think all of you care about your community. And that's something that Zev Yaroslavsky himself has said. And this would take, this would impose one size fits all solutions according to what Scott Wiener thinks. Personally, I think that in a county like Los Angeles County, where we're actually, you probably didn't know this, LA urban area is the most dense urban area in the US. Followed by San Francisco, San Jose, and New York is number four. New York City, obviously Manhattan is the most dense area, but in terms of urban areas, we're already the most dense. Scott Wiener has exempted Marin County. Now, I recognize, and we all need to recognize, that we do have a housing crisis. And we need to creatively come up with a way to try to fix that. But who better to do that than the people that live in the area? Okay. Who better to do that than us? We're not doing our share, but we're doing more than anybody else. And we are creatively trying to come up with ways to deal with our housing crisis. But so many of you came and moved to this area because something attracted you. The way that it looked, the schools, or whatever it was. And that's why the people live in, in LA and various communities, different reasons brought you there. So what I don't appreciate, or not, I don't want to say that. I understand that the people in the state, that their hearts are in the right place, and yes, they're right, we need housing. But the way you do that is you come and you meet with us, you want to introduce a bill, it should be a blank sheet of paper, and together we should write every word that goes on that bill and where we're going to do this and where we're going to do that. Local control, local control is critical. I've been to Sacramento. That's where I learned how to get weird. And people will sometimes say, Herb, your thinking is weird. Because nothing is dead in Sacramento. It's like a vampire. And it can be, can be brought back to life. So we on the council, some of us, have to be the ones that are trying to protect our interests as we, as a community, come up with what we believe is a fair approach to deal with the crisis that we have. And so sometimes you might get a little frustrated. Why didn't you come out, Herb, and oppose this bill in the beginning? I'll tell you what. Sometimes you oppose something, again, strategy, tactics, time. Sometimes you oppose something too early. What do you do? You put yourself in a position to be accused of just opposing without even thinking about it. Sometimes what you do, you give our opposition more time to wear down the people that support us. So we have to gauge that. And I think when we came out as a council unanimously and opposed this, it was at the right time. It was at the right time because of relationships that we have, that I have in Sacramento, so I get a feel for what's going on. And I'm just keeping it real with you, okay? I'm just letting you know how we have to try to fend off some of these things. So we were lucky this time, but now we're gonna have to figure out what to do next. But I honestly believe we don't have a housing crisis, we have an affordable housing crisis. So we should be doing whatever we can to build more affordable housing and less luxury housing, in my view. Um, this also addresses gentrification. It gives five years in sensitive areas, but if you don't 
pass something that, that slits your own throat in five years, this bill will do it for you. And who knows what it'll turn out to be once it's been amended. Um, it's been amended so that some of the areas that weren't impacted, now they're almost all impacted to some degree. So there's, there's, there's hardly a safe single family home neighborhood anywhere in the state of California. Uh, HBOZs, they've amended this to make it a little better. So I believe now HPOZs that are more than nine years old are exempted. I have some in my district that are newer than that. And unless a structure is, is uh, on the state list of historic properties, they can just start throwing up five-story buildings, or depending on interpretation, eight-story buildings in the middle of an HPOZ with a bunch of little cottages. So this is going to be very bizarre. People have worked uh, for decades to get their HPOZs finally passed, and they're going to be right out the window. But your legislators think that nobody is aware of this and nobody cares. So getting that message out, while this bill is in waiting for a while, nothing's dead, and at the end of the session, somebody could do what they call a gut and amend, take a dead bill from somebody else, and bring back a version of this. So we have to take this time to really get the word out. Um, so this is kind of a disaster in the making, but this amazing turnout could start to turn things around.